a big giant welcome to San Jose City College and the CIS 54 C and C++ programming class. All of the lectures and lab assignments are online and your work is to be submitted online. Here's a list of topics in the video. Introduction of the instructor, me, the course, the syllabus, who should take this class, some letters from students, the level of work that you need to do, prerequisites, computer knowledge and skills, hardware and software needs, who sh should not take the class, the good, the bad, and the ugly. My name is Dan McElroy. I have worked many years in industry as a programmer for both very large and very small companies. I've also been teaching in several areas of the computer field in both hardware and software. This is an introductory class in computer programming using C and C++ and is being taught as though it is an engineering type course. It transfers directly to many university computer engineering degrees including San Jose State and UC Berkeley. By completing the course you will be well prepared for more advanced courses and for transfer. The class starts off slow with the numeric and character data types. From there, we cover variables and the structured programming constructs, sequence, selection, and repetition. The intensity of the work picks up when we cover functions, subroutines, and how to access files on a disk. Then come arrays, manipulating character strings, memory allocation, and object-oriented programming, also known as OOP. You can get a copy of the syllabus at http colon slash slash program dash info dot net slash c plus plus slash syllabus dot htm make sure that you use a capital c for c plus plus the syllabus lists the class schedule and a lot of other important information i recommend that you read it carefully and even print out a copy you can take with you if you transfer to another institution who should take this class? One, if you want to be a programmer, or if you're already a programmer and want to learn C or C++. Two, if you want a certificate or degree from San Jose City College in computer programming. Three, if you want to transfer to a computer engineering degree at a four-year college or university. If any of these reasons apply to you, you are in the right place, and it is my pleasure to serve you and guide you through your journey in computer programming. Here are some letters from students. I just wanted to say thank you for both the online courses this semester. I really appreciated the consistent schedule, your quick response time, the videos you created, and how you slowly increased the difficulty of each assignment. I felt scratched at times, but as a first course in programming, I really feel like I learned a lot this semester. Thank you again. And from another student, I can tell you have put in your own time to make sure students succeed. It def takes off some of the pressure and intimidation taking a programming course. After I take the Visual Basic course, I will be taking the Java course and I'll be looking for you. Mm. And from another student, this should be a five unit class. There is too much work for a three unit class. Well, I can't please everybody here. I don't want to mislead anybody, but this is a learn by doing class and there is a lot of work. By definition, a college unit is 48 hours of work per unit per semester, or possibly a little more. This equates to at least 144 hours for a three-unit class, or nine hours per week during a 16-week semester. If taken during the summer, all 144 hours are compressed into three weeks for an average of 24 hours a week, maybe up to 27. I never would have made it through college if I didn't have a few easy courses. Unfortunately, this is not one of the easy courses, either for you or for me. There are no prerequisites listed for the course, but there are several recommended skills that you should have mastered in order to become successful in the course. There is a certain amount of similarity to creating programs with only a project definition to solving math word problems. 
You also need to be able to read a textbook that is occasionally very technical. Lastly, you should be able to write a brief essay. Ah, computer knowledge and skills, file management. You should be familiar with finding and saving files on your computer. The internet, you should be familiar with connecting to the internet through an internet service provider or network connection. Web browser software. You should be familiar with using web browser software to navigate the internet and locate information. Email. You should be familiar with sending and receiving email messages. Discussions. You should be familiar with posting and reading discussion messages in a threaded format. Attachments. You should be familiar with sending email messages with attached files. Word processing. You should be familiar with creating, editing, saving, and printing documents using Microsoft Word or the equivalent. As far as hardware and software requirements, you need a computer that is connected to the internet to view the lectures, the lab assignments, and submit the lab reports. You also need to download and install C, C++, and a software development system to build and run programs for the lab exercises. We will cover those during the lab. There's also an online compiler that is available, which is sufficient to do the first few lab assignments, but you will need to install the C, C++ development system for the remainder of the assignments. Who should not take this class? I already covered who should take the class, but who should not take the class? You should not take the class if you really hate math and you truly believe that math, M-A-T-H, stands for Mental Abuse to Humans. Although there's not a lot of math in the class, writing a computer program to solve a written statement is similar to the skills learned solving word problems in algebra. You should not take this class if you're looking to pick up an easy three online units to get a total units you need to qualify for some activity on campus. You should not take the class if you have vacation plans or your schedule is full with other important obligations. You may want to consider enrolling in the course at another time. This is especially true during a summer session because missing one week of class is like missing three weeks during a regular semester. You should not take the class if you're just looking around for something to do and would kind of like to see what programming is, but you really are not willing to commit to spending the brain power and the required time for doing the actual programming projects. The good, the bad, and the ugly. What is really good about taking a class online is that you have more flexibility in choosing the hours you can work. You don't need to drive to campus, find a parking, and a place in the classroom. The bad part is that some students feel isolated when taking an online course. I am trying to minimize this by having a required online meeting with me and having you participate in several discussions with your fellow students. The ugly part is that with no set schedule and not being on campus, you need to be very disciplined and set your own schedule. You just have to make sure that you keep up and don't fall behind. Self-discipline can be acquired and it is a quality that will benefit you throughout your life. An online course is the procrastinator's dream come true or maybe a nightmare. There's a lot of information, a lot of work, and the end of class seems to come way too fast with too much work to catch up on if you put it off until the end. I am ready to get started. I can hardly wait until this class starts. I am ready to go, ready to watch my programs make the computer actually do something that I made it do. Until then, here's happy programming dreams. Bye-bye. See you soon.